and that's why they call it Polynesian sauce. What's going on, everybody? This is the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for cover band musicians and family just to learn how to rock more and suck less. In Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Adam Johnson. In Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. So how was your weekend of weekends? You know, it was really good. It was really good. I did a uh, really fun trivia on Thursday, and so that was a blast, and then teed up the St. Patrick's Day show on friday and that was a blast i will say i think i'm not sure i said anything about it on the pod last week but i know i talked to you about you know i was having some feelings about going to play saint patrick's day at a bar the the bar that we were going to be open an hour later playing an hour later than the irish pub that's around the corner that is the known throwdown spot for saint patrick's day yeah so i expected to get an influx of hooliganism at that time and we're playing right on the floor yeah, and right in front of the front door. So somebody could like walk in the front door, take a step and a half and be in my face. And um, I had some concerns about this, but in fact, it turned out everyone was lovely, well lubricated, having a good time, but really no bad behavior at all. And it was packed and bumping and cranking and super fun the whole night. So it was all very, very, very good. It seemed that a lot of the uh, folks in our community were having good shows over there and (laughs) A lot of folks talking about how uh, worn out they were the day after. Mm-hmm. So if you were out there in the clubs slanging them songs, yep. we salute you. Indeed. Congratulations on all of your success. Indeed. What else happened, Dan? Indeed. Well, then the kid went off to a uh, Girl Scout camp and the wife and I went off to Raleigh and had a fun little weekend eating tapas and staying in a hotel. It was really nice. I love those topless bars. Mm, topless. Yeah. Little small plates. Small plates. Well, that's great. Yep. So it was, really, uh, it was a really good weekend all around. I spent St. Patrick's Day at home. So we have a tradition in our house. Me and my wife came up with this right after we got married that we have Mexican on St. Patrick's Day. Nice. Because you never have to wait. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And we flip flop on Cinco de Mayo sometimes. But yeah, that was, (laughs) we did it one year and it was like, it was such a nice experience. We started like telling other people like, hey, do you want to come celebrate St. Patrick's Day with us at a Mexican restaurant? And it became a whole thing. I like it. But we just hung out at the house and um, had a good time. It's a lot of fun. That's good. We had Christmas dinner at the local China buffet restaurant a couple of times. And it's interesting because they, they run a special for Christmas. It's the Christmas dinner special. It's all the usual stuff that's on the buffet every other time you go there for $5 yeah. more. Of course. Yeah. It's the uh, convenience fee. Is that or, I suppose. It's the Christmas special. It, it's it's the, special uh, for them. It's the Ticketmaster Cure <laughs> add-on fee. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if we want to get into that. Oh, it's a whole thing. Let's just say it's not really great out there for people who are trying to play music on tour. Unless you're Taylor Swift, who's apparently things are going very well. Saw some crazy videos. Yeah. There's a part in her show where like she dives into the stage and then like it's all LED and it you can see her swimming underneath the stage and she comes up in a different part. Cool. Like halfway through the show. Cool. And I thought it was cool because it was like she was wearing a red dress and when she dove in the red dress was on the person swimming up the stage. But then I saw another clip and she was wearing a green dress. And when she dove in the green dress trip, so like they accounted for her having different costume changes depending on the night of the show, which is a whole other ball of wax. But like that's the, those are the details. I guess that's the when you're Taylor Swift's production person, you handle these things. Yeah. That's all you are supposed to give something one of a kind. Yeah. Unreplicable. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So prepping this week for another trivia on Thursday, I did hear from those guys that they just want to keep it rolling on Thursdays after this month. You and I will need to shift our recording from Thursdays to Wednesdays on the more or less permanent. Uh, Okay. Glad that seems to kind of work for you. And then we're playing, the band's playing at the Cider Place in town here, Bull City Cider Works. They're doing a day called Cider Jam. And it's several bands all back to back. And I informed them of the fact that bands can't just start one after another. Manager was unaware of that. And, um, gobsmacked at that prospect huh <laughs> yeah i said you know we're gonna what's the turnaround like and she just a total blank stare what the what now so we've adjusted our times and she has now given us two hours of turnaround time after the last band so that's almost like not a turnaround it's almost just a load in so that's good you can do that oh yeah here's a thing worth following up on coming out of the saint patrick's day gig my guy justin who we're not calling a roadie yes who i'm paying like a band member and mm-hmm. he's a big part of setup and then almost all of teardown while I schmooze. That's our, yeah. that's our agreement. We had the cars loaded up and he and I looked at our watches and it was last beat plus 40 minutes. Wow. And we, we hadn't hurried. Like it, I didn't feel rushed yeah. getting us out of there. Like 
his additional pair of hands now pretty much knowing what bag everything goes into and which car they go into to go in separate places has fully changed the game. That's awesome. Well worth the money there. I'm super happy with that. Yeah. Some things are just worth paying for. Yeah. 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 And I'm now billing us like a five piece. Yeah. So it's not like I'm even going out of pocket. Mm -mm. Nor should you. Like you should have things set up where yeah. your band works well for your situation. Yeah. And looks like you got it figured out. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. Good stuff. I'm still back and forth. It's all contracts for me. Mm. Um, <laughs> I had a fun moment where like, you know, as the ADHD business guy, um, I had an email where a client was like, hey, so we were just waiting on you to send us the contract. And I looked through the chain and I was like, yeah, I was waiting on you to give me all the information I requested last week in order to fill the contract out. Oh. And so she was like, oh, my bad. Here it is. All right. And like as a way to illustrate that I wasn't on top of things, I went ahead and literally put it into a contract and sent it out less than 10 minutes later. So all right. puts the onus more on them and <laughs> the willingness much more on me. So yeah, that was fun. But yeah, everything's everything's good. Just lots of prep stuff. Our next thing is uh, another public date. It's uh, 37 Main down in Avondale, which is our kind of new public home base. Working on our set list, bringing in... I think three new songs. We probably could do more, but don't want to push it. Yeah. And uh, we're adding Kyrie by Mr. Mister, which is a long requested one from Nathan, our drummer. All right. Uh, we're going to give that one a fair shake at practice. We're re-adding Any Way You Want It by Journey. We used to do that one and we hadn't done it in ages. So that one's making a comeback. And there's one other one and I just can't think of it. And halfway through the other conversations we're having, I'm just going to blurt out sure. an 80s song. 100%. Name. You'll just know. Uh, no, yeah, you'll just know. No, it'll be a callback is what it'll be. Yes. Um, I'm eager to hear how Carrier goes. I think that's one that a lot of people are going to sing along to, but it's, I don't know. It feels a little specialty. I mean, it's a mid. It's a mid. It's a real mid. Yeah. But if you listen to the instrumentation, like it's real, it's real crunchy. Like the guitar is super distorted. Like I think it's got some, it's got some oomph behind it. And I think potentially being able to lean back into something in that kind of yes. lane yeah. could potentially be a fairly big yeah. it, deal. It's one of those tunes that the vocal stack is really the heart of it. Oh yeah. So we are going to be doing a lot of practicing. And then I'm also, frankly, going to record the stacks sure. of all of the people on stage and just put them behind us. Why not? Because, yeah, it's you can't say we're not singing because we're doing it. <laughs> That's us. Yeah. And you got to have a bunch of real sticky harmony stacks behind yeah. you or that song just doesn't make sense. Right. Right. It was It's One Way or Another by Blondie. Uh, we've done it once before mm -hmm. and it went pretty good, but man, there's some, some of these tunes we haven't pulled out in a while. I'm stoked on, uh, things can only get better. Howard Jones is one Love of those. That tune. Uh, Love it, that tune. It, yeah. it, to yeah. me, also no one's to blame. Both just killer. Yeah. To me, this one kind of fills the same kind of stank face, funky kind <laughs> of spot that sledgehammer does. Yeah. It's in that same kind of vibe. I just look, and also just, People don't know that song until you get to the chorus. And by the time you get to the chorus, they're like, oh, yeah, that's what this one is. Right. Right. Because as soon as you start going, oh, 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 that's well, all you need to do. Oh. All right. So here's the chorus, the the evil opposite of what you just said. Yeah. We're doing Bad Mamma Jamma. Mm -hmm. We do it medleyed with Smooth Criminal. Yes. Right? Both kind of funky, you know, A minor riffs. And Bad Mamma Jamma is way too long. It's just way too long. Mm -hmm. The song is just way too long. And we've been There's doing a lot of those. We've been doing three full verses and choruses of it before we transition into Smooth Criminal. And we gotta do less. We gotta do less. Yeah. I think I'm gonna talk to Taylor about doing a verse and two choruses and then just getting the hell out because that song goes way too long. So uh this came up, I think, in the in the Patreon Slack. Somebody was talking about ready to go by garbage. Mm -hmm. And I had heard it because we have a, an alternative station in Atlanta called 99X that was like the peak of culture in the 90s. Right. And then it got, it got dismantled and then they literally just relaunched it, I don't know, less than six months ago. And that song came on the radio and I was like, oh man, this song freaking rips. The guitar part's cool and the vocals are cool. And then it just like kept going. Right. It just, it's another one of those that like, I got like, Two thirds of the way into it, and I was like, "We're not there yet, and it's going to be a while." Yeah, right. So, right, right. 
Right. Right. Well, if you're considering yeah. that, you have to add it. You have to you you have to find a, a situation kind of like what you guys are doing. Yeah, and, with, and maybe uh, use it as a transition between two things. I can totally get like somebody's like, oh, this baseline. Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's do that five hundred times. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a time and a place for that. It just may not be on our stage. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But I will Rapid- say, smooth criminal rips, and everyone sings oh, along yeah. with it, screams along with it. It's the best. The stops in the chorus are uh, everybody pumps their fists with them. It's it's good. And are you doing kind of the um, alien ant farmed version of that song? I'm on something that's a bit. I need to be. You don't know about? Yes, you do. I must. Listen, folks. Back in the late '90s, early 2000s, there was a whole thing where you just took a pop song and you just you played it faster and you you put distorted guitars on it. You do basically what's a a, a considered a punk cover, which is just same song faster, louder. Yeah, that's what we're uh, doing. Alien Ant Farm did a version of this song and it's band instrumentation. So it's just guitar and bass and really, really busy drums. Mm. So if you, I, I'm actually quite surprised. I'm sure you I've heard it. using that as reference. I'm sure I've heard it. No, but I'd say like, if you haven't, you should re-familiarize it with yourself. Maybe you'll find right. some good notes of stuff to add into your interpretation. I will dig into that. Taylor brought us that tune because she likes it on fiddle. She does that mm-hmm. on fiddle. Which is a, a cool touch. I don't know if I've brought it up. We also do Sweet Child of Mine with her doing Slash's entire part on fiddle, That's including all the solos. And it's uh, it rips. It Yeah, that tears the house down. Does she have one of them electric fiddles? No, she just has a pickup. I put her through some distortion sometimes on the mixer, and it's nice, but we just let her we just let her go clean these days. Well, I, and have, I mean, have you seen an electric fiddle? They look like uh, super cool. Demon Hellbat kind of Demon things. Hellbat. I, that's what I, I like that's it. the word no, I, I could think of. I'm in. Yeah. Pointy boy fiddles. Yeah, pointy boy fiddles. Exactly. There you go. Speaking of which, to wrap up all of our uh, housekeeping, because we don't have any reviews, I tried to subtly drop a hint. I won't be subtle. Drop, leave a review, please. We so can, we can read it. Yeah, the more of them we get, it's easier for people to find us. It's it's good. So you should do it if you haven't already. And we'll say your name um, on the pod. We will. And whatever else you write in that. Yeah. So if you say Dan Ray is a poopy, poopy doo-doo head. You wouldn't be we'll necessarily say wrong. No. And you'll get it corroborated on the air. So please go do that. In other news, we've still got another week in the new site, coverbandconfidential.com product sale. So if you are in the market for Ableton Live templates, uh, Q-packs, or blank contracts, mm. Use the code NEWSITE10 to get 10% off your order of all the digital products. And I think our merch is also on sale. And there's a link to that there too. So you could get yourself a Pointy Boys Club shirt Sweet. to play with your electric violin. Love it. And uh, yeah, that wraps up all of the housekeeping housekeeps. We're up to date. Yeah. So, it's so what gear. are we going to do today? It's gear. It's yeah. all about gear. It's gear. Normally we wouldn't pile all these things on but this week three particular things were announced or occurred and uh, they're all i think relevant in our world so we couldn't not talk about them the first one is more of a news story of kind of sort of and the other two are specifically about gear announcements that came out this week but i wanted let, to get yeah, this off the let me off make my let chest. Me actually just make one personal gear announcement first st patrick's day was the first gigging night of my new reverend mm-hmm. it's a reverend double agent w which means that it has, it's the version of it that has a floating trim. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, did I love gigging this guitar. Oh my entire God. And one of my regulars who comes to everything and is super judgmental about my gear. Mm-hmm. Says, I don't like that mic, she'll tell me. Um, Jeez. Yeah, no, she's, she, I, 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 she comes to everything I do. I absolutely adore her. She's the best human. And she's not shy with the feedback. Loved it too. It sounds great. Looks great. Oh my God. So shiny and green under the lights. Perfect for St. Patrick's Day. And boy, the whole night just felt great playing it. I felt like it sounded terrific. Meshed with the quad cortex really, really, really well. I'm super happy with my Reverend. Super happy. Love it. Yeah. Mazel tov. Yeah. Gelling with a guitar is a magical thing. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as I bemoan the Stratocaster shape, that Schecter is my favorite guitar. Mm. And it's funny because like the two guitars that I play almost exclusively now are the probably the two cheapest guitars in my stable yeah. at the moment. The the most expensive one being just over five hundred bucks, and that includes shipping. So, <laughs> but it, yeah, when you find something that just like 
resonates on not just on like a an auditory level, but like on a, on a spiritual level. Yeah. You guys are on the same frequency. Yeah. I think I shared this with the patrons, but like I literally took it out of the box. I did the thing. I waited 24 hours like Sweetwater wants you to. I did Nerd. it. I did it. I opened it up and I played I played the opening riff of uh, Little Wing. And I, I'm not ashamed to say I was kind of in tears by the end of the opening riff because like something about it felt so good and it resonated so nice and it just rang so just tasty and felt good and yeah there's something about connecting with a guitar that's like it's like a really good first date well and i again reverends are criminally underrated yeah i'm super super glad to hear that now yeah. let's talk about let's get into news okay here we go this is a funny one for me because again we don't get opportunities to talk about current events very very often mm -hmm. but this is something where our worlds collided and uh it's just funny to me because i remember this particular piece of gear being around back in the day and it being thoroughly unimpressive. Yep. And uh, so this whole thing- Kind of a joke, actually. Super, oh yeah, yeah, super funny to me. This week, or this past week, Josh Scott of JHS Pedals fame made a video where he put the Digitech Bad Monkey Overdrive against pretty much every major dirt box on the market, including a Klon Centaur. Yeah. And he's got a talent for making things sound good. And so he knows how to make any gear sound as good as it possibly can. And he provided a compelling case that uh, this distortion box, which retails for like 30 bucks, yep. was worth purchasing. And the funny thing was, is that like, I remember when they were blowing these things out back in the day for like $19, $17, like you couldn't get rid of them. But now because they haven't been in production in a while, people have started taking these garbage pedals and they're putting them on all of these resale sites for insane amounts of money. Because of this video that showed that they could be set up under ideal studio situation to sound an awful lot like these famous pedals. I mean, he had like an AB switcher box that was toggling back and forth between the multi-thousand dollar artisan Klon Centaur and this $30 bad monkey. And by God, they sounded a lot alike. I'll give it to them. And so what happened on the secondary market is insane. And I'm actually on Reverb's website. They did a uh, they did an article on it. And they were using their price guide and their completed purchase history mm -hmm. to show the the kind of trending. And over the past year, they were going from anywhere from like $20 to $45 on the low end and maybe like 90 bucks in the high end. And then literally in a week, you have them going for 200, 225. And these are these are sales, right. like they purchased them for that price. Right. Cause I mean, some people are putting them up for like 500, 600 bucks. I don't think any of those have necessarily gone through, but people did make a insane profits on these pedals. Uh, and again, they're fine, I guess. They're not anything worth writing home about. But the interesting thing is, and this happened just today, because of this crazy demand frenzy for this pedal, Digitech is putting them back into produ production. Wow. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. And I'm fairly certain that is a huge mistake, yeah. but I guess we shall see. I mean, that being said, if they start selling them again for the price that they were selling them for back in the day, maybe they'll sell a whole bunch crap load of them maybe Who knows maybe but if they think they're but gonna if they get, try to like yeah if they're gonna get 200 for them eh, yeah i surely would not go down that road no and listen you know we both have modelers that have some of the most iconic and best sounding gear in guitar history yep does the quad cortex have a bad monkey drive that you no can choose? no no it doesn't it doesn't hmm. it doesn't yeah, there's not one in the in the Helix either. Yeah, yeah. That must mean it's boutique. So I'm calling it now. Mm. Write this down for future reference. April Fool's Day is right around the corner. True. How many of these amp modeling companies say that they're coming out with a new version that includes <laughs> a bad monkey? <laughs> Could be none, but if one of them does it, I demand credit. It seems like something Line 6 would do. Yes. Based on their track record, it is well within the realm of possibility. Yeah. And I mean, Josh is legendary for this kind of crap. 
he does something in, about what he considers an underrated pedal, and all of a sudden these things uh, mm-hmm. shoot up in price. He did another one in April of last year with the Digitech DF7. And again, it's just a digital distortion pedal. It's not anything yeah. wild, but um, they were initially going for fairly reasonable prices. You're looking at like a hundred bucks, 90 bucks. And then he makes a video about them and then they just shoot up in value. And, it, and it's still going on. I just looked up the DF7s that are currently on Reverb right now. And it's like 170, 190, 200. He's got the ability to, um, to goose the market. And you know what? I'm going to say one other thing and I'm going to call out another creator. I don't know if that's cool or not. But uh, Trogli's guitar show is I think solely responsible for increasing the resale cost of a lot of huh. Gibsons, specifically the Goddess series that was from like the early 2000s and the one that I've been looking for, that SGZ. He's done videos on both of them. And after he did that, all of them either became insanely expensive or they just don't show up on Reverb anymore because you know people just buy them up immediately. So that's more of a personal thing. Like I actually, I like Trogly stuff. I, I watch his videos all the time, but it's just like, I'm just mad personally because <laughs> every guitar that, from Gibson that I think is cool, he, he does one video about them and all of a sudden you can't get them anymore. Jerk. So I, I feel two ways about it. Yeah. So that wraps up the secondary market complaint session. Now, speaking of things week. you feel two ways about. That's right. So there was a very, very big gear announcement that happened in the middle of this week that definitely had all of the guitar players in my world quite a Twitter. Mine too. And that was the announcement of the Headrush Prime guitar multi-effect amp model vocal processor unit. Yep. Which is quite a name. It's a mouthful. It's a floorful. It It, it is both of those yeah. things. So the TLDR is that this is a, basically Headrush's full-size amp modeler form factor solution. Yep. Uh, up to this point, Headrush was making kind of smaller units, some of that were a bit more specialized. Their whole claim to fame was that they had this touchscreen and yep. kind of yep. Their UI is supposed to be UI. way, way better than anybody else's. And looking at it, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. You touch things and that's all well and good. Drag them around. Yeah. But this is their basically like, this is our Cadillac. This is the the full Monty. And it's, it's squarely aimed at the Helix. 100%. Yeah. It is um, very similar form factor. Well, it's, it's even you know, wider. Did you see that? Did you compare the numbers? Uh, I did not. It's three inches wider than the Helix floor. Wow. It's five inches wider than the Helix LT. It's deeper. Actually, took- it's a little shallower. Like its okay. height is a little less, but it's mm-hmm. it's notably wider than in yeah. Helix. So, you know, we basically found out about it. it. It drops on Sweetwater and then every guitar creator and their mom drops their video about it. Yeah, because they've had um, demo units for three weeks, something. And so they ran it through its paces. I watched uh, Steve Sterlachi's mm-hmm. tutorial because I, I follow him for Helix stuff and he's just a, a good guy to know. And... um. I felt like he did a really good job of kind of like explaining it and how it worked and it sounded fine. Yeah. You know, they were just running through presets. They didn't really have a lot of chance to do custom patches or anything like that. And it sounded workable. It was a totally serviceable, you know, example of these things. I dig it all day long. A lot of the stuff is kind of retreading things that other companies have done before. Nothing from the kind of, the wide angle of specs makes this one much more unique than any of the other modelers. But there's one core disagreement I have with that. Okay. And that is the vocal stuff. Well, but that's what I'm saying. Like just zoomed out, you look at this thing and you're like, yeah, it looks like all of the other ones. Yeah. Okay. Fair. But as you start getting into the details, there are some very unique yes. value propositions yes. that nobody is doing. Correct. That I thought were really, really impressive. Yeah. Um, the one that Dan was bringing in is that it actually has dedicated vocal effects yep. for a vocal chain. Yep. It, it's handled completely separately from the amp modeler stuff. And uh, it includes Antares Autotune. They've yep. got the actual like licensed yep. stuff the in the box. Yep. Yeah. And vocal harmony effects that are driven harmonically from the guitar input. So mm-hmm. I've always hoped that the quad cortex will come up with this sort of thing, because it has a mic in and it has a guitar in, and I could get rid of a lot of gear, frankly, if the quad cortex would do the vocal harmonies that I need my TC Helicon pedal to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be great. It'd be, 
God, my life would be so much easier if I could just standardize on that pedal. But so far that hasn't come. But the head rush does seem like it has that. Now that would be a step back to a much larger form factor for me, which I, I don't know. I don't know if I would do that. But to be able to run vocal effects and guitar effects through the same box, mm -hmm. that's very attractive. Well, not only that, it has a 20 minute looper. Yeah, that too. And the looping function, like, I mean, Headrush made a dedicated loop board. Yeah. Which, you know, I'm assuming they took all the things that they had done with that one and found better ways to produce it and right. kind of it became right. a part of this thing. Yeah. And, you know, with the dynamic scribble strips, like it does, like, if you are a solo acoustic performer and you don't have a floor solution that can do all of these things, this is an absolute no brainer. And, and at $12.99, it undercuts pricing on Helix Floor. It's competitive with Helix LT. It uh, blows quad cortex out of the water. The price is, for me, among the killer values of this thing. It's pretty insane. Yeah. Now, it's also got some cool functional things that none of the other ones are doing. The fact that you can double tap on any of your preset buttons means that you have way more options as far as like mm -hmm. switching things out and just customization, way more options. And um, they call their presets rigs. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of a snapshot-esque kind of way of of changing sounds out but i think it this one goes a little bit further mm -hmm. i was really impressed with the general functionality features that i saw it's a very impressive looking unit yeah it, but it is not without its shortcomings personally it is outrageously big yeah like it's big yeah considering i had that crazy pedal train pt3 pro and this thing would literally take up the entire thing. Yeah. The prospect of going back to a rig that size just does not appeal to me in any conceivable way. Right. The biggest one for me personally, though, is the lack of any sort of computer editing ability. Right. Their case that they're making here is that the UI on their touchscreen makes that unnecessary. And I'm not sure I agree. I'm not. No, I'm not sold on that prospect. But there is some cool stuff that it does do that other ones that they have the um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in it, yep. which is pretty much unprecedented in this form factor and this kind of thing. I said Coin Cortex has Wi-Fi and has a cloud service as part of it, but it doesn't have Bluetooth. Yeah. Now, of course, the one feature that everybody is talking about is the cloning mm -hmm. functionality, where it is taking some of the stuff that the Kemper really kind of revolutionized. Right. And yes, anding it, where you have the ability to not just model or profile an amp, but you can like do an entire rig down to the pedals. Mm -hmm. And apparently this, one of the things that they were saying is that like it, it can do, it, it handles fuzz pedals really well, yeah, no, which is none something of those, that apparently none of those, a lot of these guys can do. Yeah, none of those cloning or analysis things, including Quad Cortex, can do fuzz pedals because they're too nonlinear. They're messier than yeah, and. and, and an algorithm can really understand, but apparently these guys have cracked it. So that's cool. Now, is that something you, it, would that be a use case for you for this thing? Absolutely not. Yeah. So to me, it, it's a little gimmicky, but I understand why it exists because I think ultimately what these kinds of features and functions are built for are for people who are being pulled from using full-size rigs. Yes. And the prospect of being able to say, here, you can take all of your stuff and put it into this box. Right. And for people who are very enamored with their gear, I think that that is a value add. For a person who's been entrenched in the modeling ecosystem for almost five years now, uh, I don't care. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't used an amp. Since I came back to gigging 10 years ago, I haven't used an amp. Yeah. Um, I really know I, I have nothing to model. And I have two amps that I really like, but I have presets that sound just as good, if not better right. Right. than they do. Yeah. I have a Rocker Verb 50 Mark I, but I also have the Rocker Verb 100 model in my Helix, and it sounds really gnarly. Yeah. And there's not a sound in that amp that is worth carting a 75-pound right. rig yeah. again. Exactly. There just isn't. Exactly. W will I crank it up at home when the mood strikes me? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just think... I, cloning, while it, it is a really cool way of, of utilizing this kind of technology, to me personally, it's just, it's not a value add. Yeah. But I think with the price point, with the feature set, I think they are going to sell a ton of these. For sure. I think it's going to be a winner. Headrush has kind of been a bit of a fringe element in this world. And 
they've released a products and they've done okay. And some people use them. Some people really don't like them. I think this is the one that puts them squarely into competition with the heavy hitters. Yes. And if it is able to do all of the things that it says that it can do on the level that the other ones are, I think this is a, a huge win and for that. And the content creators who've had preview units and putting out demos of them, they're very positive about it. It seems like it's fully everything it claims to be. So God bless, you know, I'm glad that there's another uh, player in the space and my hope is that it will push Quad Cortex, which I, I am all in on right now, to reconsider the prioritization of their vocal chain, which was the thing they said they were going to do to begin with. Mm -hmm. Their delivery of the promised upgrades after launch has not been as promised. It's been slower than they said. Yeah. Particularly, you know, they they are famous for plugins, desktop plugins that do guitar effects really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be, those will be, ported to the quad cortex you know you'll be able to use your your plugins like that that still hasn't happened so it's yeah. been over a year since that device came out and they're well behind on the timeline that they announced about that and and i get it i'm a software guy stuff gets late it's harder than you think it's that's all fine but then something like this comes out and hopefully they start to feel some competitive pressure and start to feel like they yeah. need to deal with some of the undelivered promises um, yeah and i say all that having gigged it last weekend and gigging it again next weekend and quite happy with the box. So it's not going to take me away from it, but I do have hopes for its future. Yeah. When we went through and I was kind of watching it, the Patreon Slack was just like, everybody was talking about it <laughs> and just couldn't get enough except, information. Except for Mike Schulte, who said, are you guys done geeking out about guitar stuff? Can I come back into the gear channel now? Fair, Mike, fair. Yeah, if you are a drummer, uh, you just what you just go ahead and throw this podcast yeah, into the this, ocean. This episode is not for you. Nam's in a couple of weeks. Like it's it's just going to be rough. That one won't be for you uh, for you guys. Yeah. But what I was saying after going through all of the features and the reviews and stuff, I was like, the gauntlet's been thrown. Mm -hmm. Headrush has walked in and said, "Here you go. Yep. This is what is expected now." Yeah. And as a person who has a modeler and has really enjoyed my experience with it, this just throws more innovation into the marketplace. And I think we'll, like you said, it'll motivate the other manufacturers to up their game. And ultimately like everybody benefits when a product like this comes out because yes. any product that pushes the envelope just inspires the other, it's competition to, to rise to the occasion. And I'm super stoked because all of the features that I talked about that I thought were really neat, I would love to have in my unit and feels like something that could happen. Yep. So yep. I'm really excited to see how it lands. There was definitely a lot of talk about the Quad Cortex when it was released that all demos that were done were very locked down and you can only show certain things. I'm curious to see how this works in in the real world as a physical product and yes. not just as a kind of locked down yes. uh, demo unit. So time will tell, but if it does half of what they say it does well enough, I think it's a, it's a slam dunk product. Yep. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what it does out in the marketplace. For sure. So there's that. The other thing, this is more of a gripe. <laughs> I feel entitled to a gripe every now and Let then. Let it rip. Let's do it. So the other product that I saw announced that just really, it, it's twofold. Because on one hand, it's a really neat product. On the other hand, no. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that announcement was of the new Billy Joe Armstrong signature Les Paul Jr. Right. So he's had a signature Les Paul Jr. for a number of years. I think the last one was, I don't know, it may have been five or six years ago. And it is literally a Les Paul Jr. with a single P90. And that's it. And a Les Paul Jr., it was designed and built to be the affordable alternative right. that students can afford, that people it was the squire uh, don't, of Les Pauls. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The budget model was stripped down mm -hmm. as, as low as it could go. Yep. And so they make the signature model Les Paul Juniors. The latest one comes in two colors, mm. like black and silver flake. Okay. Um, to me, the coolest thing is the guitar case because they have leopard print um, velour on the inside, okay. which I thought looked really cool. But that being said, the cost of this Les Paul Jr., this single P90 Les Paul Jr. with dot inlays and no binding, no nothing. $2,200. Yeah. That feels like too much money, Dan. You know, listen, you can get a reverend 
that's fantastic for 1100. How many reverends could you get with 2200? Two of the kinds that I have, two. Okay. And and you could probably get them in cooler colors than black or silver. Heck yeah. Mine's a metallic green. There you go. They're like really cool purple too. So, I mean, th- this is not late breaking news. We are not exposing anything that people don't already know about Gibson currently. Unless you're a drummer, in which case you don't care. Exactly. But like when you can get a Les Paul classic that has all of these things, including two humbuckers, transparent finish, and like it looks for $200 more. Like, I just don't understand. Yeah. Like what? Uh, I mean, I know the answer, but I don't. Maybe I, it's just because no, I don't you like know the answer. answer. How about that? No, you know the answer. What's the answer? Go ahead. Uh, The market for this guitar is dentists who listen to Dookie hmm. in middle school. There you go. That's who this is for. Yeah. People with more nostalgia and money than sense. Yeah. They made an Epiphone version of of this a few years back, and it was five ninety nine. And that is a price point where an aspiring guitar player who really likes Green Day's music could save up and get one. And it, and it had his name on it. I mean, it has all this. It's literally it is a Les Paul Junior. single P ninety. Even has the uh, the leopard print uh, case. Okay, but is it a signature? Uh, what constitutes a signature? It's got to you? the artist's name. Where does it need to be? On the web Trust page, Raj cover? no, on the web page that sells it. Okay, I mean it is. It it is it it, it is a Epiphone Billy Joe Armstrong signature. Oh, Les Paul All right, then it's a signature. All right, good. But because like I thought you were like saying like no, it's got to have his name on it, and I'm like looking through pictures like no, it no, doesn't have no, his no, name no, on no, it, the, but the, it's still the twenty two hundred dollar one doesn't have his name on it. I'm just saying like it's branded to the artist, and that's what makes it valuable. Yeah, but again, you're starting with a very plain guitar indeed. And you're not adding anything to it. The only difference that I can see is that, okay, so I will one up the case. You can get a hot pink chainsaw case with the leopard print on the inside. The case That's is not, special. Is the case, the case, wait, is, is the case available on any other model? Absolutely not. And you can't so, buy it there you go. a la carte, okay. which is also bull snacks. In that case, it's a signature case, and that's what you're paying for. It, regardless, what we're dealing with here is late stage capitalism. This is pure name recognition pricing and certainly not guitar value. If you yeah. want a guitar value, why? You should buy a Reverend. We're really just trying to get that uh, endorsement. Yeah. Huh? But that's the thing is that like I own two signature guitars and they're both imports. All right. And with the exception of the Nick Johnston one, there is not a uh, custom shop or American hand built equivalent. But even then, like the Nick Johnston import model plays really, really, really good. Sure. The, the Nick Johnston American made custom shop one plays like on the level of like a sewer because that's I mean, that's inherently what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a sewer kind of take. And look, don't get me wrong. I, I Signature guitars are are super cool. I think the St. Vincent is amazing. Mm-hmm. But this one, clearly, it's there's nothing special about the way this guitar is spec'd at all, except for that it's got a signature on it. Mm-hmm. But I mean. You can you can get a truss rod cover. You can get a truss mm-hmm. rod cover. Yeah. So yeah, that's my gripe. It's it's just no, it's too much. Mm-hmm. But what do I know? They, they may be sitting in a meeting. And go, we sold seven hundred of these things in the open on its opening day, and you know I don't know what the markup on that would be, but it's got to be astronomical. And I'm sure Billy Joe gets a um, gets a little something sure. per unit. Of course he does. Of course, of course. There's there's a royalty there. I've been feeling like Gibson is mostly about the positioning and branding and marketing much more than the guitars these they're days. trying to make themselves into a lifestyle brand they've got the guy from levi's as the uh head dude yeah and that's i feel like that's what they're trying to do right and they've absolutely fumbled the bag with doing things for the guitar community recently but i've also seen them do really cool stuff i think they're making some moves that i think are really neat I really like all the Gibson TV stuff that they've done. I think the collection show is cool. Hmm. I think most of what Mark Ignisi's doing is is neat. I like watching those videos because right. I'm a guitar nerd. So. Yeah, well. But yeah, there's been other stuff where it's just kind of like, like, I want to root for Gibson. I I like their stuff, but um, they don't always make it easy. <laughs> to no, root and, for them. And, and you know, the word is if you play a current one, your experience is not what it once was playing a Gibson. The yeah. quality control is not what it once was. The feel of them isn't the same. I don't know. So yeah, I think that wraps up gear talk for today. Okay. Not a bummer. It's a bummer. It's a bummer of a note. Uh, yeah. I get to, 
I get too sad. Oh, well. But it's about to be like Christmas because they're going to announce all these new doodads and products. I don't know how much of it I can say, but um, speaking of new products, uh, the the first beta iteration for the new Behringer Mixer app mm. uh, was, re- was released today. I got my hands on it and um, it looks very nice. Mm-hmm. It shows a lot of promise. It is very basic in its functionality currently, but I could see some really cool potential and uh, look forward to seeing how it continues to <laughs> iterate Sweet. as they go through the, the dev process. But it's awesome. Be on the lookout for it. Cool. And that should do it. That's okay. All yeah. We've geared it out. All right, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. You know, anytime we get to sit here and chew the fat about gear and stuff is always a good time. And we appreciate y'all coming along with us on the journey. If you'd like to support us, there's lots of ways of doing that. You could buy some merch. You could go to the website, buy some uh, digital products. You could get is... all your bandmates to come subscribe to the podcast. You could have them all subscribe to the Patreon. Or to the Patreon. Heck yeah. So many ways. So many things. Or just do what Adam from the Van Band is going to tell you. Sure. 